Wellens syndrome was first described in the early 1980s by Dr. Henrik Wellens and his colleagues. They identified a subset of patients with unstable angina, who had specific precordial T-wave changes, subsequently developed a large anterior wall myocardial infarction. The EKG changes are associated with critical stenosis of the proximal left anterior descending coronary artery. There are two patterns of T-wave abnormality in Wellens syndrome. In type A, T-waves are biphasic, with initial positivity and terminal negativity, seen in approximately 25% of cases, and in type B, T-waves are deeply and symmetrically inverted, seen in 75% of cases. T-wave changes can be observed mainly in V2 and V3, and may extend from V1 to V6. There are no other EKG features of myocardial infarction. ST segment is isoelectric or minimally elevated. There is preservation of precordial R wave progression, and no precordial Q waves. Wellens is a syndrome, and not an EKG only finding. In order to make a diagnosis, there must be a recent history of chest pain for at least 20 minutes and complete resolution of pain at the time of the EKG recording. Cardiac markers are normal or slightly elevated. The following sequence of events is thought to occur in patients with Wellens syndrome. A sudden occlusion of the left anterior descending coronary artery causes a transient anterior STEMI, causing anginal pain and diaphoresis, which is not documented on EKG. If clot lysis occurs spontaneously or due to pre-hospital aspirin, chest pain resolves. During pain-free state, EKG is recorded. At that time, ST elevation improves and T waves become biphasic or inverted, which is identical to patients who reperfuse after a successful percutaneous coronary intervention. If the coronary artery remains open, T-wave evolve over time from biphasic to deeply inverted, from type A to type B pattern, and if coronary perfusion is unstable, the pseudo-normalization of T-wave can occur. T-wave becomes upright during re-occlusion. T-waves are prominent, and usually followed by ST-segment elevation and recurrence of the chest pain. Alternatively, if spontaneous reperfusion occurs, a stuttering pattern may develop. This would manifest as alternating EKGs, demonstrating Wellens and pseudo-normalization or STEMI patterns. If coronary blood flow is limited for a long time, STEMI develops. This sequence of events is not limited to the anterior leads. Similar changes may be seen in the inferior or lateral leads. This EKG was taken from a patient with history angina, recorded during pain-free state, and it demonstrates Wellens syndrome type A pattern. Leads V3 and V4 show biphasic precordial T waves with terminal negativity. There is minor ST segment elevation and no precordial Q wave. R wave progression is normal. It should be noted that, Cardiac markers are normal or may be slightly elevated in Wellens syndrome. Wellens syndrome is considered STEMI equivalent, and the definitive treatment is cardiac catheterization with PCI. This EKG demonstrates Wellens syndrome type B pattern. There are deep and symmetrical T wave inversions throughout the anterolateral leads, from V1 to V6, and also in leads 1 and AVL. ST segment is depressed, R wave progression is normal, and there is no precordial Q wave. I hope you enjoy this video. Stay safe and healthy.